Welcome back. Uh, we are thoroughly into the uh, second half of the first day of IDTX. You can tell because you may notice I've now sat down. Uh, standing up all day was very optimistic. <laughs> Turns out not going to happen. Um, so uh, we're diving into our first talk on AI, which is very exciting. I, I got a bit of a sneak preview before we started, and I've only become more excited to hear the rest. So, uh, Jennifer, I'm going to get off the stage, hand over to you. Uh, the stage is yours. Ah, thank you, Tom. Okay, so if you read my description for this talk, you might be thinking, oh, I'm here to see how to make scenarios with AI. And if that's the case, that's uh, I'm really happy to share that resource with you. But my focus today is actually just activating AI automation using our employee resource center that I've built and using AI to search that employee resource center. But in order to do both at the same time, I will show you how it works. So in the Employee Resource Center, I can search my resources in here. So I'm going to ask the AI, what AI tools can I use to build scenarios? <clears throat> it has an Ask AI button. Cross fingers. <laughs> ah, there are several tools available. So the AI is actually, uh, this is information that I've inputted into the library through Notion, and I will show you that later. But the AI is reading all of my content and it is bringing up the most relevant information and answering the question that I've posed to it. And not only will it answer the question, but it also will give me the sources. So what sources that this AI is pulling from. So it'll show me the article. Now, this article, I'll get Tom to throw this in the chat. This article has all the tools I use to develop scenarios with AI tools. The thing to note is when I'm building scenarios, a lot of the content that I build is basically leveraging Christy Tucker and Kathy Moore's experiences. So when I use AI, I use these brains to help me build the content. It really is, and I think that is the story of AI. The best use of it is just being able to leverage experts' knowledge. And so when I'm prompting or I, when I'm prompting the AI to give me like questions for subject matter experts, I will use it in reference to like use Kathy Moore's, I use Kathy with from subject matter ex expert Kathy Moore, uh, generate some subject matter expert questions. But here is the entire resource, feel free to go through it. And yeah, I think you will enjoy a ton of the like content in there that really just leverages AI in a very meaningful way. Now, you, I don't know if you're a parent or if you've experienced this, but you walk into, I walk into my daughter's room two weeks ago and I see this disaster. And normally what I do is any parent that is limited with time, I grab all the toys and I think I can just, I'll organize this all by myself. I'm just gonna throw the toys wherever I can. I'm gonna organize it how I wanna organize it. And Noah, my little daughter will be jumping on the bed, pretending to help me. But this time I sat down with her and I said, you know what, Noah, <laughs> what do you do? What do you wanna do? How do you wanna organize these toys? And she said, well, I want to organize them by color. I want to put my pink toys in the pink box, my blue toys in the blue box. And immediately I thought, oh, I could just see so many problems with this organization method. Like there's Legos and Paw Patrol toys. Like I wanted to categorize them by like what type of toy. But I, you know, I did the suggestion so I could let her own the organization. And sure enough, a couple days later, She's looking for her pink Paw Patrol helicopter. And she <laughs> looks at me and says, hey, mom, do you know where my pink Paw Patrol helicopter is? <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't remember what color it is. I mean, maybe I should have remembered it was pink, but I'm like, I have no idea. And then she said, hey, it's pink. It's in the pink drawer. So her organization like really just resonated with her and she could find the stuff she needed because she organized the information. And I started thinking like, how does this sort of relate to like 
an employee resource center trying to find resources. Well, what if those toys, instead of those toys, it was valuable employee resources? And like, you know, optimally, really in her room, in order for all of us in the house to be able to find her toys, it would be really great if there was like shallow, clear plastic bins where you could see all of the toys inside. Now, what if those, what if we could do replicate that kind of feeling when we're looking for employee resources? So yeah, this is kind of how I imagine when you're trying to find something in the moment of time that you need it. You just like, you know, it's either in Google Drive or it's in your Slack or it's somewhere uh, hiding around on your desktop. And you have probably felt the frustration of trying to find a resource when you need it. And you know it's somewhere and you just really need, actually you don't even need the whole resource. You just need a small snippet of information from that resource. So I, when I first saw ChatGPT, when I started playing with it, a few months in I started seeing like, well, it's taking all this general knowledge and that's great. Like I, I mean, I love using it to help me write. I love getting it to help me do a lot of my tasks. But I'm thinking, hey, it's got all this information. It's searching all this general knowledge. Can we make something similar? But this time it's going to be searching like a specific knowledge base, like a company knowledge base, or even at the time I was thinking my own personal knowledge base, all of the content that I have accumulated over the time. And so, you know, I, I thought AI would be the perfect, you know, the perfect solution for this. But AI comes with complicated feelings. And I'm kind of constantly swinging between the dread and the excitement of AI. I don't know about you. And I would like to hear like what kind of, how you're feeling about AI. Like, are you on this swing where you're feeling kind of dreadful? Like AI is going to take over. We, I, it's going to take over jobs. It's going to take over the world. Like there's kind of that narrative that's been sort of um, just perpetuated. But then there's also like the excitement. Like I wanted to, to do my, do my job faster and like have a uh, just easier time doing tasks and like maybe even offload some of the repetitive tasks that I just don't want to do. And those, so I swing between those two constantly. And I mean, I think it, it makes sense when I have conversations with people about AI, they have the same kind of feeling. But this, um, I felt really hopeful when I started even doing the scenarios. So when I was building scenarios, I found some really great resources. And it was, uh, <clears throat> there was an epic prompt and that's in the, in the resource I gave you at the start. There's an epic prompt for helping to build branching scenarios. So if you've never built a scenario, a branching scenario, it'll get you up and running. And it even like the thing that I love about the branching scenario and using AI and using ChatGPT is sometimes the subject matter experts are like, oh, you're trying to like really squeeze that information from them. You're really trying to, you know, get the golden nuggets from them on like what needs to be in that scenario. And often like they'll kind of have a blank, like I don't really, they won't remember, they won't recall what is the scenarios that are, you know, causing their employees to stumble. And so by building a scenario of ChatGPT, and even though it won't be very accurate, you still kind of get an outline of that scenario. And so you can present that to subject matter expert, and then they can fill in the blanks and they, they'll love to tell you where that ChatGPT was wrong. And so it's a perfect kind of like formula for your scenarios. And then there was 11 labs. Oh man, when I found 11 labs, that was another like total excitement. It was, it just blew me away. My, I was working on a project for a to like team that was translating their content into Spanish and they really wanted narration for Spanish, but uh, you know, it was, it's going to be expensive. It was their whole suite of courses, but I showed them this AI and we presented it to someone who's a native Spanish speaker and they were blown away by how good the narration was for 11 labs. So, you know, big win there. And the subject, the, the person that was heading up the project, they said, I never thought in the years that I've worked like as an L and D that I would ever use AI in an AI narration 
in my courses. I'm shocked at how good it is. So there you go. So 11 labs and then Descript. Descript, if you're doing talking head videos, oh man, it is unbelievable. It You can edit the Descript. You can edit the text in Descript so that you can uh, make easy cuts. You can cut out your ums and ahs. You can even create your own AI voice in Descript. So if you've missed a sentence or two, you can throw that in there. So these three tools gave me super excited. I got really excited. But <clears throat> then I was, uh, as I'm like learning about this AI, I'm also at the same time, I'm reading Nick Shackleton's book, How People Learn. And he kind of gave me some comfort because I, as an instructional designer, especially with what at my previous job at do too, I was doing a lot of course development and I'm thinking like, this isn't quite like it's, it's kind of good, but it's not great. Like it's really hard to reference that content and to use that content when you need it as a resource. And as I'm reading Nick Shackleton's book, he really just solidified for me. He actually, what he did was he made me get rid of my guilt for using Google maps in a city that I've lived in for five years. That's what he did because he's just said, Hey, like Google maps is a resource. You are using it so that it can like easily take that task off your plate. And now you have more room to focus on other things while you drive. Like when you are, I, I live in Victoria and there's bike lanes everywhere. So I have more attention to like the bike lanes and to the pedestrians. And so I just, that guilt sort of was absolved, but also the aha moment of like, yeah, we need to build resources like Google maps for employees that help them in their flow of work. So that just got solidified for me. And then we had, uh, he had a really great part about uh, learning experiences and how to change behaviors. And I thought he was just really, he really just also gave that part of the, of the instructional design, like of our job. Like when you're creating a learning experience, it, it needs to be meaningful. And in order for it to be meaningful, he says you need to attach emotion. Now I won't get into that part, but if you're really interested, he his book is great and it really helped me just understand my job more clearly. So I found out our performance goals. So this is from Nick Shackleton's book too. So at retention, we're trying to find out like what is it that we need for learning? Like what do we need for learning? And I just started three months ago. And so we took it to the we took it to the company and we asked a few questions and we got they want to think to share support documentation with answers they will feel supported and we will be able to easily find answers well that seems like it's pretty aligned with my interest in doing this employee resource center i uh, just charged with ai amped up with ai well my first place to look was ChatGPT because I had such good luck with it. And I thought, hey, uh, can I make a GPT that uh, is, is, is taught from the resources that we have as a company and it will give us answers and give the employees answers. And I'll show you what that looks like. So here I have ChatGPT. And uh, they actually, uh, even at at the time that I was looking to build this to build this uh, solution, they they had released the GPTs, and so that's where you can build your own GPT. Hmm. So here we are. With uh, I have the retention.com product. We'll just explore GPTs. Oh, my GPTs, and I'll show you how I built it. And so in the GPTs, we have a load more here with the product support. And if I edit the GPT, you will see kind of the background of training this GPT for the content. Now we have the, the name. It generates a little picture for you to help you find your GPT. And then I gave it instructions. You are a client success manager with extensive knowledge. And then I put the knowledge documents from our external facing 
uh, external facing knowledge base at, at uh, retention. I threw those in here and then the GPT learned from that content. And so if I ask it a product question, what is the problem pro solves? It will give me a pretty good answer. And it's not necessarily a terrible solution. But there was some a few hurdles that I saw immediately that I just was, was hoping that the GPT would do. Like, for example, I really wanted it to reference the content, reference the article, but it wouldn't do that. It wouldn't reference where the content was found in the article. And then the other thing too, with accessibility, it didn't give me, it didn't give me an opportunity to give this, this GPT out to people. So uh, it, it had a paywall in, on it. So if the only way that an employee could access this is if they had the chat GPT four. And then so, and then also the big, another big one, like the third, the biggest one of all was the updating. To update this knowledge library was gonna be quite difficult because I'm gonna to have to upload these documents every time a change gets made. Yes, I've got them split into six, but like this is a lot of knowledge that's thrown in here with the PDFs. And if I scoop back to my presentation, so yeah, I just, I played with it and I just, I tried it. I tested on a few with a few people pre preliminarily, like just through conversations and we could immediately see those uh, hurdles. Just, they weren't, they, they were too much that it didn't make sense to make a GPT. Uh, there's other ways to do it. Open AI. I just, I hadn't been able to explore that. I didn't have that knowledge. And so, um, but you know, there's, it's always ever evolving. Like the solution GPT might make sense in the future, but for now it just didn't work for us. And, um, you know, I was feeling a bit dreadful, but then I found notion and help kit. And really it was, it was the, it was notion first. If anyone uses notion, it's a great place to, uh, store notes and create content and it just like, it works like Google Docs, but it's just so much easier to like, to craft really great uh, experiences. And so I really like Notion for building content. And then I also had um, HelpKit, which came after. And HelpKit is a, is a skin kind of like for, to make the Notion look really good. That's what you saw at the start. That was Notion in the back end and, with um, help kit in the front. So basically my workflow works like this. There's uh, an employee resource. So it can be a Loom video. It can be a seven taps. It can be a Slack conversation where uh, CSM is answering a question to one of our, like an internal question. Uh, it can be a Google doc. It can be a, a YouTube video. It can be anything. And what I do is I just kind of create, uh, I take that, that resource and then I turn it into just like an easily searchable article with the help of ChatGPT. And then I throw it in Notion and then help kit uh, becomes my search, my AI search. And then the employees have their employee resource center and they can search for that content. Uh, I really like only ask questions if you have already tried with the employee resource center. Now that is, uh, not quite, I wouldn't say that, I, I think that the biggest problem that I was overcoming was just like repeat questions, knowledge that like you, you're feeling like you don't want to ask somebody because you should already know the answer. When we have a question at retention, we're really open and we, we have a really good community for asking questions, but we just wanted to give employees a little bit more uh, autonomy, trying to put pieces together or just like trying to do simple tasks. So that was the goal. But we definitely like, you know, in in a perfect world, it would be nice for you to be able to grab the resource when you need it in the time that you need it. It's just, that is the goal and we are getting there. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. It is, it's a few steps here, but I'll show you what the back end looks like. So. Here is the uh, notion where all of the articles live. Um, we have uh, just like, it's just broken down into our four products, FAQs, the different, uh, different 
I, collections just represent just the different um, uh, the different groups at retention. And so we have all of our content here. And then we just, again, like I'll, I'll take the content. If it's a video, for example, I'll show you in sales. So sales, we just did some post demo tasks, some resources for them. And what happened was our subject matter expert, she made a Loom video and then I just took the transcript from Loom and I created an article from it. And so it really helped me, like it, we made it so fast. It would have been, I think this would have taken me a whole day to do one video really well and write it out really well. Um, but with AI, I could do all four of her five minute videos and just, I would get the AI to step it out. And then I could just reference back to the article as I watched her video and just see if there's any discrepancies. And it was just me editing at that stage. And then just ask. And then of course with Notion, it's really collaborative. So you can also, at that point, I can get comments and I can ask people um, to just clarify content. So we have like a really, not only do we have something that's searchable by AI, but we also have a really great resource that they can that they can use in their flow of work. And yeah, so then we have the, we set it up, we have our, we have all of our knowledge here. This is ever growing. It's just um, getting bigger and bigger and more elaborate with the resources we put in there. And then for me with the help kit, uh, the, the, it, it, I mean, the really, the really important part that I thought as well, the other thing that ChatGPT didn't do that this solution does is it lets you see what people are asking. It gives you insights to what they're asking the AI. And as a learning, um, in learning development and as an instructional designer, like that kind of feedback to me just seems like the most valuable feedback to just know what the employees are asking for and how they're asking the question. And it just, so it gives you some insights to like what information you can add to the Employee Resource Center. If you go to the Help Kit AI chat, it'll show you uh, all of the conversations that have happened since the bot has been up. And it will sort them by unhelpful conversations. And so we can see like what content also isn't working in the in the employee resource center and a lot of times like the reason why the content isn't working is either the answer is not there um or it's mixed up some content that happens very rarely but it does happen um and then so it, it so it has like uh but there's another big one i'm trying to think about it. oh yeah there um oh, i can't remember but there so the, it basically just like it gives me the eyes on what kind of like how I can do the content. So if they ask a question, it's not there. I can just add the content, find the subject matter expert, get the content into the library. And so we have uh, just like really good eyes on what's happening inside and how people are using the employee resource. So this feedback is super valuable. You can also see like how many people are going on your site, um, your unique visitors. And so as an LND, you get data, you get some data to help define your decisions, which is super valuable for me. And then, so after we have, how can I help you? So this is what the employee sees. The nice thing about this uh, resource center as well is if it's, this is an internal knowledge base, so it's protected and help kit allows you to make it so that only uh, people who own, uh, by their email address. So the access is uh, just for employees. That's also a really nice feature with the help kit. And now I can just ask a question. So I can ask what, uh, and you saw that you could even see like articles, suggested articles up there. <clears throat> and so now, if someone is having is is just either I uh, has a question about the products or even about their job, like maybe they're trying to create a new account in Salesforce, whatever they're doing, they can come in here and ask the question. They get either the answer, and if the answer just isn't enough or they need more information, 
they also have the resources that are linked. So yeah, that is what it looks like. I think I have all those pieces in there for you. So we've got Notion, right? We have Notion for uh, building the content. And then we have Help Kit to uh, help analyze what kind of questions people are asking. And then we have the actual uh, the external facing um, search, search library. And the nice thing too is like it's very pretty. That's what I got from a lot of the from our, a lot of our employees. It's a very pretty looking resource center. So like it's just really nice to have this as well. And you know, it just it simplifies our resources. And you're probably wondering, that's all great, Jen, but like <clears throat> it can't be that great. Like, what should I expect? What are the downfalls that I should expect? Well, one of them is like garbage in is garbage out. So if you put a resource in that isn't great, well, then you're just going to get an answer from the AI that's not great. But the nice thing about HelpKit is if you do, if the person does get an answer from AI that's not great, they can thumbs down it. That's what I've instructed our employees to do. And so they thumbs down it. And so then I can see that we need to fix that resource. And they can also actually add co uh, comments as well. So they can add comments once they thumbs down it or if they see an article that's not accurate and they can just give me a co comment. So it kind of helps with that loop, that feedback loop. Also, the, the AI can be a bit lengthy with the answers, with the responses. Uh, that can be mitigated pretty easily though, if you uh, if you ask the bot in a, in a way that you're asking uh, a colleague. So if you take the time to ask a well-crafted question, you tend to get some pretty good answers back. But if you just say like, what is Grow? And uh, throw it in there, then it's just gonna give you everything it knows about Grow. And then also the AI in the background is, it is not controllable. Like we can't, we can't control how to, like as in ChatGPT where you saw I could give it instructions. I can't give it instructions. It is, the like, help kit is meant to be a resource center. So it, you can tell that they've trained it to, uh, to respond in such a way. So it does make it a really nice like uh, bot experience, but it, there are some things that I wish I could train the AI on. But yeah, so that is the Employee Resource Center. Um, and that is how I turned all of our resources into easily searchable resources with AI. And I am open for any questions that you have about this solution. Wow, I think there was so, a lot there. Um, really fascinating, though. I just while we're waiting for the the chat delay. Um, I'd be really interested to hear kind of what sort of post launch, what kind of broader behavioral changes have you seen in the business since people had access to this? Yeah, actually, I I think the big thing is. Well, for us, because we're we're such a new, we're a very new company, and this we've only been around for about three years. And I'm their first instructional designer learning and development. So the behavioral changes that have sort of come from it is sort of what you would expect from like uh, from like a new company. So for example, uh, they they're the value in the resources, like the value of the resources and the, the correctness of it is really, I feel like it has been uh, just um, like that, that kind of, uh, like attitude towards them has really shifted. And so, uh, especially since they can get them so easily, they can get the resources so easily, like finding that ease in it and that they can search it easily. They've started seeing the real value in it and they just like, want to put them in there. They want to put the resources in there. And so uh, that has been like, a, like that's kind of supercharging the whole, the whole thing, the whole AI. And then as well, like, it's been pretty new, so it's only we're like maybe maybe a month that we've had it up and running. I wouldn't even call it like a full launch. It's not a full launch of it, mm. but it you know it just and the thing is too is with our company is we're really interested in using AI in this way in in many different ways. Like in many, uh, for example, there's a product that we're creating, uh, and they want it to be like totally self automated by using AI to answer, like, to get the software up and running. 
And so uh, they, yeah, so it's just like, it's an initiative. Like it's a, it's a pretty company-wide initiative. And um, I think, yeah, it's just more, it's very exploratory right now, but I will, I would be happy to speak. I think it's going to be uh, just, I think there's gonna be a lot of relief. Like I feel already relieved. I see, I see some relief from people of just being able to like find the things they need when they need them. And it's just that value is being seen as well. Awesome. Um, just looking back through chat, um, I think there are a couple of things that would be uh, uh, interesting to talk about. And there was a lot of agreement and discussion around that kind of swinging between uh, excitement and dread. Mm. Um, just thinking about someone who's obviously like embraced AI, found really good use cases for it and done something really powerful with it. How do we manage that? How do we because I, I, I guess we can't totally ignore the concerns, but it feels like at the minute maybe over-focusing on the concerns might be holding us back. So, I mean, what, what did that kind of journey look like for you? Yeah, I think for me, I, I, I struggled when I saw, like, when I would see my artist friends feel really devalued when they, when, like, especially that seems like the most sort of like visual and like really emotional uh, experience for people is because when they, yeah, they just have art friends and they're just like feeling devalued. This bot can make their a picture faster than them and better and just feeling that devalued. But then as like this, like as AI has gone on, like I don't find those images very interesting. Like finding, like making original stuff, like I don't see AI doing that well. And I don't think that AI, I don't know if it ever will do it that well, but like watching, like when Photoshop came out with um, their AI and you could just like take pictures and just like fix your pictures with AI and like add a little squirrel in your, in your nature scene, you know, that seemed like really create is still like a very creative pursuit and like so much more interesting to me. And so I, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think that it just helps me make better content, helps me make better experiences. I really see it like as like a total partner in, in my goals, like in obtaining my goals. I, I think that's a really powerful perspective to have is viewing it as a partner as opposed to a replacement. I like that. Um, we've got some uh, questions coming in. Um, Erica has asked, what is the next iteration or project on your journey? Hmm. Like with the employee resource center or just in general, like oh. iteration project. Well, let, let, let's do the resource center first. Why not? Yeah, I think, okay. With the resource center, I. I like for the next iteration, it's just like taking all of those questions that they're asking that are like being um, thumbs down, like they're not accurate or, and just like taking that content and adding it in and seeing like if that continues to add value to the bot. So like, you know, like getting less thumbs down, I guess, is what I'm hoping for. And yeah, just being able to like make it a really comprehensive knowledge base. There's just so many departments and there's so many things to know that, uh, yeah, it just would be nice to just have like a really elaborate solution so that people have. And and my concern was like, well, what if we keep adding and adding and adding and then like it gets confused. But so far we've been, there's a few spots where we did have to watch for that. But like, yeah, it's been pretty good at just like finding that exact answer you need, especially like the big thing too, Erica, is I'm actually, I'm going to be presenting this on Thursday to the company. And what we're doing is we're doing a treasure hunt. And so the whole company of 50 of us are going to try basically to break the AI. And so we're just going to do it all together. And just, and that in my hopes in that is that we'll get all of the questions that they have. They're doing it in groups of 10 and we'll just get all of the questions that are niggly questions from the employees that they have that they wish was in the employee resource center. So just like, yeah, ever expanding, just keeping also like keeping the subject matter experts in the loop and getting those changes reflected in the resource center. Amazing. Um, um, the other side of the question then, next project, what, what, what's, the, what's the next master stroke to move on from this? <laughs> yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> Fair enough. Like, what do you, I mean, 
here's the thing like so again going back to nick shackleton jones and just like that whole idea of resources like i guess for me my focus will be building really great resources like okay so um in scenario for some reason in scenario building i can imagine it better erica because i i can see like the future of what scenarios could look like so like i uh, so scenario interaction for example like that right now you can build scenarios and you still do a lot of manual stuff to build those scenarios. But like there's some con there's some programs out there that let you build scenarios and it's AI generated and it is like fully like a game. And there's no like they have all of the problems and solutions, but there's no direct like questions that you need to ask the AI. You just get to be like free form asking the AI questions and the AI will reveal information as you answer questions or as, as it answers. And then, yeah, you just get this, like to get to the goal, you take this organic route instead of like A, B or C, you have like infinite routes you can take through these scenarios. So, but I feel like with this, re I mean, I would love to hear like this to me feels like it, the best part would be if it was in our Slack. Like I think if it was in our Slack, and you could make a call to Slack instead of having to open up another program. Um, and there is there there are software like that. It's just like they're really expensive and some things also not great. I've also explored those options. But yeah, if it could be like if you asked a question in Slack and the bot would just be like, hey, like tap you on the shoulder. Here's the answer in the employee resource center. And then, <laughs> and then they can just look at it within Slack. And then, uh, you know, that that would be probably it making it a bit better. Yeah. Awesome. Um, maybe on a similar kind of line, actually. Uh, Noah's asked, uh, do any of these things integrate with ClickUp by any chance? Mm -hmm. For example, for uh, they have resources in ClickUp. Um, would AI be able to provide And would you prefer, be able to provide a link for that? So I'm not sure what ClickUp is, but is it like a, does it build courses, ClickUp? Uh, it's more like a project management, resource management tool. Okay. Okay. As I as can, I've seen it anyway. You can link. You can if you can share ClickUp. If you can share ClickUp, then you could link it in the Employee Resource Center. And what I do in that case, so if there's something like a Google document or a resource that lives somewhere else, I will just put a summary of like who the audience, who that resource is for, and what the intention of that resource is. And so that way, I don't have to have the entire resource rebuilt in Notion. I can just have links, and I do that often, actually, in the in the resource center. So yeah, it, as long as you can link it, as long as you can link it, you can you can add it to your add it to the Notion resource center. Cool. I think that opens up a whole host of opportunities there, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Whether it's ClickUp or anything like that. Um, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Danny's already opened a notion for team testing. <laughs> Excellent. Look at that. From, uh, from talk to action before the talk's even finished. That's what we like to see. Um, well, You'll look, love the, notion. I'm, Danny, definitely find me on LinkedIn. I would love to hear how it goes. If you're, if you're going to bring this solution, if you're really interested in doing this, I would love to brainstorm with you. I even have aspirations of making like one for instructional designers, which I'm going to poke Tom later about, <laughs> where we just like have all of like the curated amazing resources from our, our from our community and just being able to share that with this. And like, I think, oh man, that would just be you sneeze. That does sound rather fantastic, doesn't it? There we go. There we go. We'll get some enthusiasm from that from uh, from everyone. You, you realize you've just committed us to like six months of <laughs> development work. <at> that <laughs> I'll do all the work. <laughs> I'll do all the work. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, um, do we? Do you have time for another question? Because I want to be. Uh, I want to be. Yeah, of time. Yeah. Amazing. Right. Um, Noah, um, earlier you were talking about a specific tool when you were talking about open-ended conversation with AI for scenarios. Hmm. Yeah. Oh goodness. What is that called? It is, uh, I cannot think of the software off the top of my head, but I can, I can, ooh, what can I do there? I'll just, if no, if you want to find me on LinkedIn, I can give you that resource. I, uh, it is, it's pretty, just so you know, like this one, there is, there's a couple different softwares. One of them is like pretty easy. It's, but it's not very dynamic. Like it's just a static picture of the of the character and you ask the character questions 
and it's just like back and forth through text. And I think you can use voice as well, but then the one that I'm thinking of that like would be really snappy and beautiful is the one where, um, yeah, it's like, a, it's a um, video, like you're talking to a character, like a 3D character and having a conversation. So that one, like that was pretty like labor intensive though to get up and running. If you have a big L and D team, I think you probably could do it, but yeah, I, I, I haven't been able to attempt that yet. So just that, Outstanding. that's my, yeah. uh, fantastic. Um, well, thank you so much for your time. I think this has been fascinating and certainly got us all thinking about how we could uh, how we could use something like this um please do there we go noah's in the same world as most of us we have four people on our lnd team <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. We, we all know that world um, but i think it'll be i think it will get easier like i think next year next year will be there will be more conversation around this and interest in this because it will be easier to bring up but yeah absolutely Super. Well, thank you so much. This was fascinating. Thank you to everyone in the audience and the chat getting so involved, asking questions, sharing your ideas and thoughts. Um, obviously, the comments in this video will be live forever. So please do um, share Jennifer's fantastic presentation. Get the knowledge out there. Get the conversation going. Because I feel like there's a there's a lot for us to learn about AI. <laughs> We're probably a little bit behind where we ought to be as an industry. Um, so we can start making that ground up today, which is very exciting. Um, our next presentation, there's a little bit of a gap. There's half an hour until an insider's perspective, the journey from educator to instructional designer with Holly Owens. And that's our second to last presentation of the day. Um, so we are nearly through day one already. Um, it's been lovely though. Uh, so Jennifer, thank you for your presentation. Thank you everyone in the audience. We'll see you later. Hi Tom. iSpring is an e-learning software